So yes, yet again, Cyberpunk has seen another update in the form of patch 1.31. We're going to be talking about all the changes in this video. Plus, guess what? They brought back the reflective wet surfaces in the game. A lot of you guys were really disappointed that they toned that back. Well, they've actually improved this part of the game through patch 1.31. And we're going to go over a bunch of other stuff, plus talk about another big open world game which was just delayed, so let's talk about it. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here, hope you're doing good, and we are talking about, once again, Cyberpunk 2077. Welcome back to Night City, so let's dive into the full patch notes, shall we? So this update is live right now, go get it. It is patch 1.31, it says, patch 1.31 for Cyberpunk is now available on PC consoles and Stadia. Here's a list of changes for this update. Now it says, gameplay, they fix an issue where after upgrading an item with a quest tag, the base version of said item wasn't removed from the inventory. They fixed an issue where weapon reload speed perks slow down reload time, corrected the height of the charge jump, adjusts enemy stealth detection, speed dependent on game difficulty, and V will no longer get stuck in falling animation when crashing a motorbike while also having the rock perk. Now they did some changes to quests and open world stuff, uh, including these quests here. Uh, which are disaster piece and you can see specific stuff related to that so some quest related stuff going on there and gigs uh, now on the visual side of stuff they fixed an issue where roads after rain did not look wet which was the result of ongoing work on the wet surfaces system in one three one wet surfaces should look more detailed than they did even before the issue occurred noise now they also removed hair or eyebrows in case where they were set to off in earlier game versions i remember seeing a, a, a image going around of that it says fix an issue where shooting with a tech weapon caused a momentary blinding light and then with a little help from my friends fix an issue where uh, Carol was missing her tablet or sitting in the air during a scene. So, some minor updates uh, within this, but I think uh, one of the most noteworthy things there is they brought back the wet surfaces. For those of you that were disappointed that that was removed, I know I was personally bummed, but some of you guys were like, well, it's more realistic uh, to have, you know, surfaces only wet when it's raining or after rainfall. Sound off if you still think there should be some sort of toggle option related to reflective surfaces, especially for those of you that are on PC, because then you can really determine, you know, the performance of your game and what your rig can actually handle. Now, for UI, they return missing descriptions in overheat and short circuit quick hack tooltips, return missing descriptions for backpacker resist, osmosis, and footloose clothing mods. Now, they did some miscellaneous stuff. They fixed an issue where players couldn't claim in game registration rewards due to the error a network error has occurred. Please try again later. Then they have a console specific update for PlayStation GPU memory optimization. They don't go into details if that's for PS4, uh, PlayStation 5, or what have you, but they just put a generic PlayStation. So I think that's like, I'm gonna assume that might be older gen stuff, or even both, I don't know. I think they should specify in their patch notes if they can in the future. Now, let's get some initial reactions uh, from what's going on here. Some people uh, were talking about the expansions out on Twitter. Check out this reply. This is one of the replies, it says here from DMC. It says, take a page from Hello Games, free expansions just to earn the trust of the consumer back after lying about many things. So seems like a lot of you guys want to see the expansions to be free or something more significant uh, to be free as a thank you for sticking around with this game and through all of the trouble. Sound off if that's something you think they should do. In my opinion, I do think they need to be offering a bigger incentive that is free. That's just my opinion. Uh, I think they should definitely consider looking into that. Of course, we're going to have sprinkles of very small free DLC here up until the point we get to the free expansion. I mean, not it's not free, excuse me, until we get to the paid expansion. Uh, but yeah, I think there needs to be something bigger that is free as a thank you to the players that have stuck around through the BS. Now, uh, we have this right here, a comparison. It seems like a lot of you guys are happy with the wet surfaces here. This was posted by Pablo397. It says, one, uh, zero, 04 versus 131 comparison of effects of the wet roads. And it seems like it's actually a legit improvement over what was there 
uh, beforehand. You can see they're really pushing the uh, reflective details there. So that's really nice. Uh, kudos to CD Projekt Red for doing that one. Again, some of you may want uh, the option to toggle that on and off. But again, it says here from the complex way, he says, I thought it looked better, thought I was seeing things. Thanks for this. Some people were calling it a graphics upgrade as well. Uh, so sound off. Let me know what you guys think of it when you finally hop into the game. Now, this was one of the most discussed threads out on the Cyberpunk subreddit. Let's check it out. This comes from the Stay Home Dad. It says, more info to read. 5,700 upvotes here. Uh, and it says, it's usually management publisher that ruins games, not the devs. This comes from in chess who says, Dev here, most people I work with hard and care a lot about how our end product turns out. Uh, those design decisions that players hate are driven by executives, marketing, or even influencers. Those bugs you wonder how no one saw before launch, probably because a feature was rushed too late to test after protests come from engineers that totally saw the problems coming but got overruled. It's frustrating and demoralizing, excuse me, every time I see a player complain about a feature I worked on for reasons I saw coming months ago but didn't have the authority to prevent. Devs aren't lazy, we try our best, and most of us aren't any happier about an unfinished release than you are. This got a lot of attention. It shows how developers can be put into a very awkward spot between marketing, influencers, and of course the execs that are trying to push certain features onto the developers who are just trying to make a game that they really believe in and then all of a sudden you know you have some new fresh feature that an exec has to have in the game no matter what because also investors want to see this you know it's just a spiraling thing that gets out of control on that side of things but yeah a lot of you guys also noticed this of course and we got to talk about this one right here because this right here is what I personally want to see more of in terms of free stuff for the game. Uh, Danarka says this, the devs who designed the cars and bikes in this game really deserve some credit. The quality and variety of not only the designs, but also the level of details of each cars and unique interiors for all of them is really amazing. And he has some shots here showcasing uh, his vehicles here. Really good shots, by the way. But check out the thread uh, in the description below for more of his uh, photos in game but yeah it seems like a lot of you guys are interested in vehicles cars motorcycles that sort of thing for this game and you know GTA it is absolutely massive when it comes uh, to anything related to vehicles being added to, to the game and cars so I think that's personally the direction they should be headed in when it comes to customization <clears throat> excuse me so I think it would be really really cool if they really hyper focus on car customization and character customization as well <clears throat> excuse me so yeah i think it would be really cool if they focused on so yeah i think it would be really cool if they focused on character and car customization going forward but since you can see the car from third person they should go all in on the free stuff related to vehicles I think that'd be really cool. Now, a player recently discovered something very cool. It took over a year for players to discover this one. Cyberpunk 277 player discovers hidden location nearly a year later. And this comes from, of course, the subreddit. 7,200 upvotes from the community come from Phil the Rush 2132 says, has anyone ever found this before? Well done. I was exploring and found this. Too bad there wasn't something exclusive over here. Kind of cool though. And he climbed up here and he uh, discovered uh, these loot boxes here, which of course don't contain anything, but we have a message from developers that says, well done. Now there's a lot of theories as to what this is exactly. Honestly, I think this was left here as like a leftover and something more of an internal inside type joke perhaps. Uh, or they just knew that players might stumble on this through, you know, glitching or something like that. But yeah. I think that's a fun little Easter egg right there. I'll throw the link in the description down below if you want to actually find a way to discover that for yourself. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit more about real world vehicles ending up in Cyberpunk 2077. And this is mostly through the power of mods. We see this, of course, with GTA 5, and I want to see more and more of this. But yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, these car companies in real life are very interested in the Cyberpunk theme. Check this out. 
Cyberpunk Shelby GT500 KR and 429 Cobra Jet Mustang have a growling wide body meat. And they are influenced actually by a Cyberpunk theme and it looks really, really cool here. I wanna see this so badly in Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, it would be so cool to see more mods or, you know, an official uh, licensed cars in Cyberpunk. I don't think that's going to ever happen. That's super expensive to do something like that. But yeah, anyway, let me know what type of car you would like to see that is Cyberpunk themed. Perhaps your favorite car, real life car, by the way, make its way into Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I did briefly mention at the beginning of the video, we would talk about another open world game that was recently delayed. I wanted to let you guys know about this one because I think quite a bit of you might be following this one briefly. We have Dying Light 2, which has been delayed until February 4th, 2022. So that's pretty noteworthy. That's going to be heading into, of course, early 2022. That's one I'm really excited for. I really enjoy, enjoy uh, Dying Light for sure. All right, now it's time to go over your top comments. Remember to leave a comment down below. It could end up in a future video. Let's do this. My recent video was this one right here. Brand new update, CD Projekt Red asked fans for money, Red Engine 2 info. And uh, yeah, they had a Kickstarter for one of their projects. CD Projekt Red had this Kickstarter and it was for a Witcher project. And it's just awkward that a company that netted you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars recently, um, they're asking for fan money. So it, it's definitely controversial. Some of you guys had some opinions that, hey, it's okay that they're trying to experiment with uh, something, like uh, you know, with projects through Kickstarter. But let's see what you guys have to say. Storm22000 says, this feels like something EA would do after making you buy all in-game development expansions worth 120 in total and make you buy microtransactions, then ask you for some money to help them fund projects for players. Raging Papa says, Corpo, I wish the whole game was a lot longer. It's effectively just two acts and then meet Hanako at Embers. Uh, Adam says this, anyone else miss the good old days when you bought a game and it was actually finished? Nowadays, it's more like buy the game and then wait for a year uh, to actually play it in a decent state. Yeah, 413 upvotes on that one, exactly. I don't want to beta test it, you know? This doesn't have an early access uh, tag on it. J3J says, people need to stop comparing this to the way No Man's Sky rebooted. The devs literally implemented new gameplay systems that changed the game from the ground up. That's not what CD Projekt Red are doing. We will get a couple of meaty story DLCs, but the core game will be the same. I'd be happy uh, to eat my words and see if real, if live paths extended, excuse me, extend endings altered. So there's actually different outcomes, RPG like elements installed, but that's not the aim. Now they did have like an interesting quote though, in one of their earnings call that they were very interested in further developing the gameplay. Now I'm paraphrasing that, but it seems like they might actually be interested in enhancing the gameplay systems for Cyberpunk. So don't hold your breath, of course, don't get too overhyped, but it seems like they are kind of like tapping into that here and at least uh, they are aware that you guys want that. Will it happen? Will they actually enhance the uh, experience to the core gameplay mechanics? We will only have to wait and see and Time only tell. All right, so we have this comment right here from Tamlin Day. They can use the money I paid them for Cyberpunk since they didn't finish making that game. Jao says, how much was the bonus they gave themselves again? Total sum of all C levels, please. Uh, yeah, I hear you. You know, I believe one, just one of the uh, CEOs is worth like a billion. So just to give you an idea, and they're asking you guys for money to raise money for projects i just don't doesn't doesn't feel right to me at least that's just my opinion but anyway there it is guys uh the latest happening around cyberpunk 2077 stay tuned for more news and updates i have you guys covered thanks for watching and i will see you all next time take care